All right, so this is something I've been thinking about a lot lately. I've been actually using it a lot, and it's made my RDLs feel a lot better. And initially with the RDL, what you're trying to improve, or what you're trying to strengthen, is what's called a posterior weight shift. It's a fancy way to say a hip hinge. You're just simply loading back through the hips with zero change from skull to tailbone, essentially. So with that posterior weight shift, what you're gonna find with a lot of folks especially those that wear either dress shoes where they're slightly elevated in the back or even high heels, what that slight key or that elevation is gonna do is it's just gonna shift your center of gravity very slightly forward. And you're not gonna notice it as you're walking around during the day, but if you're very kinesthetically aware of your body, what you may begin to sense is that you have a lot of tightness through the glutes, hamstrings, and calves, and no matter how much you foam roll it, it never seems to go away. Well. It does go away when you foam roll it, but as soon as you put the shoes back on, that's when it comes back. So if you switch to some sort of minimalist footwear for the weekend, and you notice, wow, my hamstrings aren't as tight, this could be part of the problem. Now it could be a pelvic positioning problem in which your pelvis tilts forward, and that could be due to weakness in the core, or weakness in the glutes, or both. So it could be a position of the pelvis issue, or it could be a shoe issue, which is shifting you forward and causing your pelvis to tilt forward. So it's kind of the chicken or the egg phenomenon. But, point being, with the heeled shoes, I initially wrote an article on uh, gym bag basics for a lifter. And I said stick to minimalist shoes with a heeled shoe, it's gonna shift you onto your toes, and that will obviously uh, mess with your RDLs and your deadlifts. Now I still believe that's the case for a deadlift off the floor, as any shift forward onto the toes is gonna be detrimental. But with the RDLs, what I began thinking about was Charlie Weindroff talks a lot about, um, well, Bray Cook as well, but both of them talk a lot about what's called RNT, which is uh, an acronym for Reactive Neuromuscular Training. And basically, the whole basis of this concept is that any dysfunctional pattern within the body, whether it be knees coming in, coming out of a squat, or a, uh, let's just say, a hip shift in a squat, um, in a deadlift, it could be something like, uh, having the bar be pulled away from you as you're coming up out of the bottom position. But in any of those compensation patterns, you're basically going to um, overload that compensation pattern to the point where it feeds into the dysfunction. So for example, you would put a band around the knees, pulling the knees in. Or you might put a band around the hips and pull yourself into that hip shift. Same with the deadlift example, you put a band around the bar, pulling the bar away from you. So what this is gonna do is cause you to overcompensate with that compensation and bring you back to neutral. So I was thinking about that concept with the RDL or with the deadlift. And to learn it, I would say you need to be shoeless. When you're pulling deadlifts, you can use socks or minimalist footwear. But then with an RDL, if you elevate the heel slightly, what is it gonna do? It's gonna shift you forward, just like I discussed. Whereas what we're trying to train is actual posterior weight shift. So if you kind of have trouble finding that weight shift, quote unquote, or finding your heels as you're shifting back, what you may want to implement is a pair of lifters. Um, you can also throw uh, two and a half pound plates under your heels, and that can be an excellent way to improve that hip hinge back into the hips. Most people do the opposite. They'll put plates under their toes, and so what they're doing there is they're already establishing the posterior weight shift, and putting their hamstrings on stretch. So they use that with a uh, straight leg deadlift variation for something that's going to increase the stretch in the hamstrings even more. But here you can kind of flip flop your thinking and say, well, if the pattern isn't sound, then it doesn't matter how much I'm gonna overload it because I'm just strengthening a dysfunctional pattern. So let's put something underneath my heels or around my knees, whatever the dysfunction is, force myself into this dysfunction so much that then I overcompensate out of it and get myself back to neutral. So, just a little thought there, but try out some Olympic lifters the next time you do RDLs, and it's probably gonna feel quite different. Let me know what you think.